right. Welcome to the team call, guys. It is uh, November 17th, 16th, 17th, 17th. <laughs> I always lose track of days. Um, new coaches this week that brought in new coaches. I'm just going to run through the names. We have Dorothy Aiken, Alicia Otis, Angie uh, Melner, Catherine Plotkin. Yay, Catherine. <laughs> uh, hmm, I can't read my own writing. Oh, Sarah Axthelm, Amy Clark, uh, Jake Axthelm. Amy Clark actually brought in two coaches, so I think she's going to Emerald this week. That's great, Amy. Way to go. Um, Lauren Simpson, Evelyn Awiel brought in two coaches. Susan Swan, Taylor Savage, Jackie McGuire, I brought in two. Gina Sherrell, Marissa Sunberg, Stephanie Hall, Braden Sherrell, Kryn Burnside, and Allison Kale. All right, coaches, way to go. Um, success Club 5, I'm in success. I actually have 14 points, so I want you guys all to catch me. Try it. I want you. Let's do it. <laughs> and Amy Clark is in Success Club already. Um, other coaches that are on the board, I want to mention them. Mary, um, Susie Scott, Christy. Way to go, Christy. Let's get to five. Jennifer Holt. Shelly, Laura, Miranda, Catherine, and Carrie. Way to go, guys. I want you guys all to get to five. You can do it. Um, one announcement before Catherine gets started here. We have, um, I'm doing the Energy Bus group, and I'm super excited about that because I listened to this book already, and it, like, fired me up so much. But I can't even stand it. I cannot wait for you guys to start. Um, like they actually said at the end of the book, have your team print their tickets. And like that's your ticket to the energy bus. So I think it's going to create a lot of momentum going into the first of the year. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so if you're not on the energy bus already, get on it. <laughs> um, and then another announcement, the hammer and chisel program is coming out on the first they have another one of those huge groups that I mentioned in the team that I'm not a fan of <laughs> but they actually have moderators this time so if like if you sign up a, a person that wants to do the hammer and chisel it might be a good idea to add them in there because there's actually going to be moderators this time, like moderating the posts and there won't be, it works reps trying to recruit your people and all that good jazz. So I think that's it for announcements. Laura, you said you had a question. So let's start with you real quick. Oh yeah. So, um, I right now am Emerald because I have my husband on one leg. Yeah. And then I have a friend of mine on the other. Okay. I'm trying, I don't, I just, I don't understand how to sort of set things up. I'm, I put a friend of mine, I don't know if she's going to join or not in the sneak peek for coaching. Uh -huh. um, I think she would be actually a great candidate and I think she could desperately use it. Um, but regardless whether or not she joins or not, I would like to know how do I position her? What, what, what should I do to, so I guess I, I'm, I'm up here, I look at myself here, and then I've got Chris on one side, and then I've got Janice, my friend on the other. Okay. Um, should I put, should, do I put it under, do I put, if I were to get another coach, do I put a, her or him under Chris, under I, my husband? I would personally, if it was me, I would put her on the other leg yep. that, of your husband, because the reason is you know your husband, you can control his active status. Mm -hmm. You cannot control Janice's active status. Okay. So if she goes inactive, you need an insurance coach over there. Mm -hmm. So okay. personally, I would start putting coaches on the other side. Like under him. Under no. under her. Under her. Like a couple of coaches under her. That way oh. you, have, you have someone active oh, on the side I see. all times. Because you control your husband's active status or your boyfriend's or whatever. Um, you control that. I see. I see. I got it. I got it. So okay. Okay. That that makes sense. So if someone goes inactive on your other leg, 
you'll still have another active coach on that side. So you don't lose. Oh, okay. That makes so let, let me add one more thing too. Right. The, the only downside is that I think that. Uh -huh. No, go ahead. See, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, well, I was, the only <laughs> but Janice is on my weak leg. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. She's on my strong leg. Like, there's more volume. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Right, from what I understand, there's more volume on my right leg, and my left leg doesn't have much volume at all. Right. Put one more coach on that leg. Yeah. And then start signing everybody up under your other side. Under your husband. Okay. Right. But got it. One, put one insurance coach under her first. That way, you have that insurance, and that way, it's not dependent upon something that's outside of your control you got, got it two or three people over there personal you know chances are at least one of them is going to stay active for at least for a while you don't have to work right on that. And, and that strategy is exactly the strategy that you're going to take no matter how far you go in this business for example once you go to star diamond okay you're going to have one diamond in each leg and then you okay once you obtain the status now you have to secure it so you gotta get that insurance diamond in each leg you know i'm just carrying it to the extreme but that's the way it goes like when you, okay. you that's where you're at with uh you hit emerald now you have to secure it by putting the insurance coaches once you hit ruby and you have an emerald on each side and someone else personal on each side you have to secure that ruby you know first you hit it then you insure it and uh then once you hit diamond you have one emerald in each leg well, you better get two emeralds in each leg to ensure that in case someone loses their emerald set. You know, so first you hit it, then you insure it. And okay. you continue that same strategy all the way up, all the way to 15-star diamond. Okay. It, it's the same concept. You hit it, insure it. Hit the next level, insure it. And you keep going up. And that's the basic strategy. And then after you have it insured, you're absolutely right. Then you completely aim toward profitability and put every – thing that's going to create volume and your weak legs so that you cycle more often got it but you have to secure the position before you worry about profitability because if you lose the position it doesn't matter how much volume you have you're not getting any cycle back got it so. got it that makes total sense okay yeah. all right thank you yeah well, very very much for your uh your answer absolutely so bottom line is if you're controlling one leg and you know that they're going to stay active you just make sure you ensure the other leg to make sure they stay active. Yeah. Okay. Then go so. for profitability after. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, Catherine. So Catherine is going to be talking about success partners tonight. Yay! <laughs> go for it, girl. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So obviously tonight I'm going to talk to you about success partners. I'm sure that most of you have at least heard of success partners, but if you haven't, basically a success partner is an accountability partner with similar goals to yours. It's someone who kind of pushes you along to always do your best. So, you know, how, um, Accountability is vital to your success. Like we see this with our fitness goals, being, account being accountable to your fitness goals, get better results. The same thing is true with your business. So a success partner is someone that you can brainstorm ideas with, do weekly check-ins with. Um, those check-ins can be just, you know, check your progress for motivation, share what's working for you, share what's not working for you. So um, I'm going to start off by talking to you about what you want to look for in a success partner. Um, number one, you want someone who is in a similar place in their business. Obviously, you're not going to partner up. If you're an emerald, you're not going to partner up with a five-star diamond. Um, number two, you want someone with similar long-term goals. So basically, your ideal success partner should be around the same rank, with the same vision, but what's also really important is that they should want to do it at the same pace as you. Because it's fine to have someone that is at the same rank as you and also wants to say retire from their job, but if they want to do that in five years and you want to do it in one year, then you're really not going to be a good match for each other. Um, number three, you want someone who balances you. Um, it's important for your success partner to have different strengths and weaknesses from you. 
to add value to that partnership because ultimately it will help you both grow stronger. You won't really learn as much if you both have the same strengths. Um, okay, so how does having a success partner help your business? Well, um, you could take on projects as a team as opposed to trying to do everything yourself. So then, like Bonnie and I, we run groups together. So if we are running a group, we divide up all of the work. So if we're doing a clean eating group, say one of us will do the menu and the other will do the shopping guide. Um, one of us will do the post for this week, the other will do the post for next week, whatever. Um, and then both of you can contribute your strengths to the project. So for example, if one of you is really good at creating an eye-catching collage and the other is really good with words, then you can put your strengths together to come up with a really great challenge group invite post. So like Bonnie has a really good eye for doing um, pictures and I'm normally really good with words. So I write our posts, Bonnie does the pictures. It works out well for us. Um, you hold each other accountable. If you say you're going to do something, you're a hundred times more likely to do it if you have someone to hold you to it. Um, I know that if I tell myself like, okay, I'm gonna message five people, I might do it, but if I tell my success partner, hey, I'm gonna message five people, or I'm gonna reach out to this person, this person, that person, I'm definitely gonna do it if I tell her I'm gonna do it. Um, the other way is that you provide value to one another. You support one another, you bounce ideas off of one another, you brainstorm together. Um, and this is like through the highs and lows. So you pull each other up. Like when one of you is feeling like really down about it, you know, the other one's always there to pick each other up. And I can't tell you how like one idea from one of us has sparked another idea and it just snowballs like that into really, really good ideas. Okay. Um, so now that you know what to look for and how it helps your business, where do you look for one? Um, a good place to start is within our team. Other places are um, if you're on the Beachbody Champions page, that's a good place to look. Or as you gain in rank, um, you'll be invited to leadership pages, um, like region leadership pages. Um, and in-person events are really good too, like Super Saturday and Summit. And it's kind of important that your success partner doesn't necessarily have to be on the same team. Um, being on different teams is sometimes an advantage because you are sharing what works and what doesn't work, and now you're getting the perspective of two different teams. Um, so I mentioned that Bonnie is my success partner, but I actually have two. Um, Bonnie is on our team and we touch base daily, um, whether it's a vital behaviors check-in, seeing where we're at with success club, rank advancement, potential coaches. Um, we do run challenge groups together, like I mentioned. So we'll talk about how our groups are going, any ideas we have to spice them up if they're getting kind of stagnant. And then I also have another success partner that I met in the Northeast region diamond group named Rachel. And now we're not like as active as me and Bonnie are. So we only check in like maybe once every two weeks and we just kind of share what's working, what's not working, any new ideas that our teams are finding and share like our long time, long term goals, where we are with them, things like that. Um, so my last final tidbit on success partners that I just actually saw in a video today, they were talking about treating your success partnership like a marriage, like if you're in it for the long haul, you have to treat your success partnership like it's a marriage because you're gonna be together for a really long time. Um, so don't just jump into it. Kind of date around a little bit and make sure that that person is a really good fit for you. You have to make sure that your goals really line up and that you really click with that person because over time, you're gonna be spending a lot of time working with that person. Is this someone that you really want to go to the top with? Is this someone that you really want by your side when you reach your goals? Um, and just make sure that the person isn't going to be just like a, a sponge per se, that this person is going to have an equal contribution. And that sums it up. Yeah, like at, at leadership, it, it's kind of, it, it is like a marriage. Like 
you are that close to that person because like there was people even at leadership like dropping down on one knee and actually proposing to their you success. My success partner. Yes. It was so funny. Yeah. It was hysterical. These were like five stars and up. You know. Yeah, yeah. and they had never had a success partner in their right. life. So to get to that point, never have a success partner is amazing. Mm -hmm. But like they were actually dropping on one knee and proposing to each other. <laughs> the leadership. It was it was really funny. Yeah. Uh, like Derek and I, we've kind of been success partners. Like from the beginning but like since we got married it's not really good to have your spouse be a success partner because you know if you're slack one person slacking you tend to both slack at the same time so that's why Shelly and I kind of have been you know teamed up and have been successful partners ever since we got married so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just that's the way it is every day every single day i talk to shelly every day and we bounce ideas off each other we you know ask each other where we're at we you know just say hello sunshine how are you this morning let's get to this today you know we just support each other any way we possibly can and mm -hmm. if one of us is feeling down that day i pick her up if she if i'm feeling down she picks me up so mm -hmm. that's what a success partner does and that's why it's so important have one and if you don't have one you know just kind of search in the team see who you might relate to like you know if there's another teacher on the team and you're a teacher you know contact them and say hey you know we're kind of the same let's talk to each other um, both nurses both work night shift what else like just tons of stuff like just find someone that you relate to and, and like Catherine said, it does not have to be the same team. It can be another coach on Facebook that you feel like, you know, you connect with or you relate to and just contact them. Don't be afraid to message. Don't be afraid to message them and just ask them, hey, do you have a success partner? I think we have a lot of stuff in common. I think maybe we could, you know, push each other and make each other better in this business. So. Oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Awesome. You froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually when it says it's unstable, I'm frozen, so. You were frozen. Yeah. Where, where did I leave off at? Uh, looking for the success par partner. Oh, probably like, it doesn't have to be on the same team. It can be on other teams too. So if you see someone on Facebook that you feel like you can connect with, that maybe you have some stuff in common, like they have as many kids as you, or they work the same shift as you, and you're, you know, you're a nurse or you're a teacher or whatever, just contact them because chances are they want a success partner as well. It's not just you looking for one, they probably want someone as well. So, and don't be afraid to ask your upline, like, hey, who do you think might be a good match for me if I reach out to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing before you go looking for your success partner, make sure you know what your goals are, that you have them like laid out and your timeline before. Because if you don't know what they are, how can you find a match, like a comparable match to what you're looking for if you don't know what they are? You have to know what you're looking for in a success partner before you go looking for one. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, write that down and, and we'll try to find you one. If not in our team, we can, I can, you have no idea how many times I've seen a post on the five star diamond and above, they call it the wall. Um, like, Hey, I have this person and she needs a success partner. She does this. She works this time. She has this many kids. She's this rank. Do you have a good match? I see it all the time. So if you can't find one in our team, chances are I can find one for you. So it doesn't have to be in our team. And uh, I think this is a really good topic. Like if it wasn't for Shelly, I would be losing my mind right now. Like I couldn't even handle this business. So thank God for Shelly. Yay, I know you're not on here today. She had stuff to do, but uh, I, yeah. Cause well, I'm gonna think about that and, and, uh, and then I will. Definitely. And then I'll let you know, cause I don't really know 
Think about what you know. want. Think about right. what you want, and I will ask. And I yeah. swear to God, I will find you somebody. Okay, yeah. I just need to think about how much I, I guess how much time I need to put in myself and what I'm willing to do at this point um, in my life to make sure that I can progress. I, I'm not super, I'm not, uh, I'm pretty patient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not in a humongous hurry. At the same time, I, I do want to progress. Um, so it's one of those things that I just need to think about it. I, I have many other responsibilities as we all do, <laughs> but I definitely take it seriously as, as, uh, as you can yeah. tell, I've been posting those videos like crazy. So you've been doing awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Little by little. Really proud of what you're, what you've been doing. <laughs> Thank you. I love yeah, that. Sherry. I'm oops, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Shelby Jean was supposed to be my success partner. Yeah. Ignore her. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to be contacting you in a couple days about getting a new one. We'll find you a new one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as long as you promise not to go to It Works Like Her. <laughs> I promise. I'm not going to do the raps. <laughs> like, I'm so frustrated with that. You have no idea. But, like, I like that this is happening though because you guys see that it happens to me too. It's not just you guys. Right. Like it happens to me as a five star diamond. Like I lose coaches that it works and body by by <laughs> you name it. I've lost coaches too. And and thrive and whatever. But they don't do any better in that business than they did in Beach Body because they're just they're company jumping that's what they do like oh my gosh i was in this company for one month and i didn't make a dime well i'm gonna go to this next company and then they and none of them make any money ever because they don't stick it out they don't wait that year that we tell them wait a year of consistent activity and you will see the seeds you've planted grow it's so frustrating it's, it's the exact same imagine if someone in your hometown, like we live in a small town, opened up a restaurant and he opened up this restaurant for a month and was like, this isn't working. I think I'm going to open a gas station. <laughs> Shut it down and open that up for a month. This ain't working. I think I'm going to open up uh, a, a, an ice cream shop and, and try that and do that for a month. It's, it's the ridiculous. same ridiculous. It's like you have to pick a business that you want to run and you've got to put yourself in it and you got to do consistent effort, advertising, put your heart and soul into it, be here in a year, and then see where you're at. You know, that's what you have in anything, whether it's a brick and mortar business or whether it's an internet business. These amateurs that come online to so-called run a business that have punched the clock their whole life, that have no concept of what it takes to be a true entrepreneur, will jump from one thing to the next, which is as ridiculous as opening and shutting down a restaurant in a month, going to a gas station, going to an ice cream shop. It's like, seriously, no one would ever take them seriously. <laughs> like, are, are you a joke? You you, have, you've if, got to be an entrepreneur. You've got to commit to whatever it is you're doing. If you open up a Domino's, it's going to take you three years to see any profit. Yeah, from and, that four hundred thousand dollar Domino's restaurant, and I, I almost did that. Yeah, I was at did. the point where I was doing the franchise classes. This is what they told me. They said, "Okay, they said your investment will be four hundred thousand, which I had to have up front." And then they said, "In order for you to even be approved for us to accept your money, you <laughs> have to prove to us that you have three years of income, liquid cash, saved, saved up. in the bank." So you guys can live for three years, you and your family, because you won't make a dime for three years. And then everything goes great after your $400,000 investment, working 60 to 70 hours a week in a hot pizza shop for three years, and no vacations, basically, while you're getting it no up and running. Vacations. If everything goes well, beginning your fourth year, you can expect to make somewhere between 80 and 90 grand starting your fourth year. Wow. wow. That was the, that's business. So when people are like, I've been doing this for two months and I've invested 250 bucks and I haven't made a dime yet. So then they switch companies. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> 250 old dollars you spent for 60 days and you haven't made but one cycle yet. 
poor you you know it's like are you a moron or what it's like you have no concept of how business works you've got to be here in a year you got to be willing to invest and that invest. is doing your vital behaviors every single day yes for one year it's not just okay once a week i'm going to do my three vital behaviors no because that's going to take you three years to make any money <laughs> right every day taking that one hour to do the live power hour like we did one hour a day for one year and i swear to you your life's gonna change yeah and, and see when i and just so you guys know uh since it's just us uh when like for me and this is typical in beach body like males focus on profitability and females yeah. focus on rank okay yep. and, and that and we're that, all recognition based yeah and, <laughs> And that in no way is like a sexist remark whatsoever. No. Believe me, there's tons of females okay. that have a higher rank than me that make way more money. Way more. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is we just focus on different things by and large. As a general rule, that's a safe thing to say. And uh, and on the wall, they talk about this all the time. Yeah. For me, like I've never hit five star. Like I'm finally going one star <laughs> finally. But <laughs> but you know what? But she's not making what i'm making yet no and, and the reason is is because like when i first started i'm like okay i've got to get this leg cranking in volume this leg cranking in volume i don't care what my rank was i want to cycle as many times as i can over and over make as much money as i can that's all i cared about i mean i cared about helping people don't miss how could she make more money than you if she's a higher like wouldn't her cycles be higher than yours no because he's higher he's uh, I, uh, he's higher like he's my upline i have a whole nother leg beside her so full of star he diamonds and other leg else. that's worth oh. he's making way more money than i am as yeah. a five star but he's diamond he's finally going one star because <laughs> Susie's, by the way Susie's going Susie. diamond on Susie's going diamond yes yeah, she told yeah. me yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's awesome yeah yeah but but so, you know, there's a profit. So I've always focused on a profitability thing. But that's a men thing. Yeah, like men is. focus on profit and cycles and volume and like they're just, their minds are different. So they focus on like the numbers game while women, we like to be recognized, you know, the same as we like to, our men to tell us we're beautiful. Like we, we want to be recognized like one star, two star, three star, five star, whatever. That's what we thrive on. But the men, they can care less about recognition. They want money. I want the they biggest want, paycheck every week that I can. They want to support their family. Yeah. They want, you know, the dollars. So my, 14, my 14 year old musician son is listening to all of this with a big yeah, smile on his face. It's true. <laughs> right. So, so just now, you know, like, when I give you guys advice or whatever, even though I'm not five star yet or whatever, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for almost six years. He mentored me. I've been doing this for almost I mean, six years, making a ton of money. Way more than you know, me. It's, it, it's, uh, <laughs> and, you know, so it just depends on what your goals are, you know, for how you should be attacking this yourself, you know. And that's what I need to, that's what I need to little by little study more of is how to attack it. I, I tend to think more like a guy sometimes. Um, but, but I need to kind of, I don't, I don't fully understand how the structure is and I know that will come and I'm not even worried about it now, but that's why I'm just dealing it one step at a time. If you want help strategizing, you know, for things like that, I can definitely help you because I completely understand exactly just, how all that works. Just call him. Yeah. Okay. We can talk, yeah. we can talk about a strategy and, you know, like profitability and things like that. Uh, it, it just all depends on what you want. Do you want to be two star? Do you want to be recognized as summit? Do you want the recognition? Do you thrive on recognition? Do you thrive on being like diamond and have your name announced and you know, all that stuff? Or do you thrive on supporting your family and having an income and you know, having your dreams come true? What do you thrive on? Right. right. That's where your focus needs to be and ultimately you can do both you yeah know, but, you can at but, first but as far as a strategy as far as running how you're placing your coaches and for what reasons and why depends on what you're trying to get out of it if you're trying to get the 1500 a week or 2000 a week as fast as you can it's going to be a different strategy than if you're trying to get the five star as fast as you can 
It's a different placement strategies and, and, you know, things like, you know, putting people in your strong leg as opposed to putting people in your weak leg. That's what you do for profitability. But if, you know, if you're going to be stuck at one star, unless you put people in your strong leg, if you're shooting for five star, you're going to be putting people in your strong leg anyway. You're like, ah, profitability will come. I want to get five star. That's my goal. Well, that's fine. Because like, that's profitable too. It just, you know, you might be making a thousand a week less. Of like for instance, like I'm at five star right now. If I want to go to 10 star, which is double where I'm at right now, I have to put people, like new people, new coaches that I sign up, I have to put in my strong leg. And that really doesn't make any sense to me right now because I'm trying to earn more income than, you know, recognition. So right. signing up coaches in my strong leg and making more volume over there when I'm already having tons of carryover volume doesn't make any sense to me. No, it doesn't. Everybody that I sign up goes in my weak leg right now because I'm trying to make more cycles, which equals more volume. And That's what I would do. And I'm not after recognition right now. That's not what I'm doing. I want the volume. And, and I made this decision like halfway through the year. I think at the first, the beginning of the year, I was like, I want 10 star. But as you know, the year went on, I'm like, no, I'm like, Forget that if it means putting people in my strong leg. Like, that's stupid, in my opinion. So, you know, I started putting everybody in my weak leg, and, and I'll never hit 10 star this year. Like, I, that was my goal in the beginning of the year, but it's not happening because I'm trying to put everybody in my weak leg so I can make more money. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're helping people, and that's awesome, but the bottom line is we're all in this to make money too. We all have dreams. We all have goals, and we all want to make more money, and we want, all want to make our family more secure. So it just all depends on where your goal is at to where you're going to put people. So that's totally up to you. Which well, as I, as I, I hope to have that problem, and as I do, I'll certainly call on Derek. Absolutely. Yeah. Call on either of us. We'll yeah. be there. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome question. Anybody else have any questions? I'm good. Okay, great. Well, awesome. You guys. Guys. No problem. And we will see you guys next week. Nice. All right. Have a great Thank night. Thank you for talking tonight. Thank you. Good job. Bye. Bye.